Hi, this is Nick George with Clouds Diamond Sharpening with another video for an A5 or 76. Um, let me start by um, explaining the difference. This is an A5, two speed, middle's off, low, high. Um, the plates are different, the switches are different, the cords are different. The difference is, is a 76 is one speed, but they do make 76 is two speed, but they're called Titans, and they have a long cord like an animal clipper. Barber clippers are shorter because they don't really have to move around the animal, they just move around a sitting human. Um, second, third difference is uh, this hinge doesn't have a latch. It's a... Uh, it just has a hinge that holds the blade down. So this is an animal A5 two-speed clipper. Um, you can change it easily by putting a 76 um, nameplate on it, change the hinge, change the cord, change the switch, and then it will be a fully barber clipper. Um, but this is two speed, so it has a turbo gear. Doesn't matter, it'll just run f faster and slow speed. But anyway, so let's uh, get started by diagnosing the problem before we even plug it in. We can just see if anything's broken. You take this lever, wiggle it back and forth, there's really not much play. Um, but if you look at the lever, well. Yeah, it's not too bad. I would. That probably doesn't need to be replaced. Okay, so we take take the hinge. Uh oh, I can lift it. That already tells me this hinge is weak and it's not going to hold a blade down. So, so here's a blade. It latches. But see how it doesn't stay down because the hinge is bad. Now it's latched. So you gotta make sure it's latched. See it doesn't latch. So this this is bent. So you can push it and then it latches. See watch. Doesn't latch. Then you push this. That's how you know that the, the latch needs to be replaced or bent back straight. Alright let's plug this in and see where we're at. There's low speed, doesn't sound bad. There's high speed, sounds pretty good for an ostrich. The cord is good. And that sounds good. Okay, now you feel air coming out of the vents. That's because this is a AC. So a current runs through this field and then a current runs through the armature. So this has to cool because the electricity running through wires get hot. I don't know if you ever touched a, a, a computer cable after you run it for a while. It's probably a little warm. It's because electricity is going through it. Now if you groom with your hands over here, this clipper is not very good for you. If you groom down here, it could be good for you. It's very powerful. It's m more powerful than any Andis. Um, a lot of people, or barbers use them because they're slow and they're dependable. Um, and they're not very much to maintenance if you keep the maintenance up. Alright, well, let's get to work on repairing this. So. Take these screws out. Unplug it so you don't shock yourself. So I'll take my at home advice and do that. Okay. So <clears throat> this is a lever. This is a link. This is a gear. Okay. <clears throat> now even if you have a brand new one of these, brand new link, brand new gear, and you go like this and it still wobbles, this shaft is broken. Okay? 
Now, if you replace the gear, the link lever in this shaft's broken, it's still going to have play in here. It's going to leave lines in your cut. So, it always isn't this, but most of the time, it's this lever and this link that goes bad. It's $5 to replace both of them. So, it's not much. So, yeah. So, I would recommend getting those replaced all the time just so you're always cutting good okay this is a two-speed gear there's a washer at the bottom you want to make sure that goes back in there or this gear won't sit up high enough okay let me explain grease around the gear goes in that hole and around this shaft grease does not go over here this is a grease catcher it catches all the nasty grease so put clean grease over here and do not fill this area up it's probably ruining your clipper it probably will ruin your clipper because it's just dirty grease that's going to get mixed in with this it's going to wear these little these little notches down then you'll need a new armature because it'll it'll break it'll strip gears all the time um, sometimes these break but only on the newer ones that where these don't break anymore they break right here instead so you want to make sure that's not wobbling want to make sure that's not wobbling okay so now we go to the brushes this is called an oiler it's to oil your clipper while it's running what I do is just push my finger like that put a couple drops until it stops sucking it in and then you're all good okay so you take the brushes off like this now just replacing your brushes is not necessarily a good thing um, you think your clipper is still running good because you keep replacing the brushes but honestly there's if this eats a set of brushes you need to take this apart if you pay me or if you do it yourself but you gotta do it you gotta clean the carbon out of there because that's just extra black stuff that can leave on humans or dogs and also it could be collecting part of the electricity and causing heat it could short out um, switches cords whatever and uh, you just don't want carbon in here so just replacing the brushes may work for two or three times but trust me it won't work for very long and you'll be buying a new clipper instead of spending twenty five dollars every three months you'll be spending 200 every other month for a new clipper well I don't know it depends on how many how how long you use it but here's the brushes so see the little round area you want to make sure that goes on the armature now a lot of people put these in wrong you put them in wrong then I gotta take it apart and bust it out from the inside bust these out because they got these little grooves in it see the little flat lip if that doesn't match in there it's gonna get jammed and then you're gonna have to pay me to uh, fix it okay so this is the end cap okay let's start this is very hard for some people um, two speeds one speed okay see the wire two speeds one speed one cord one, two switch wires now this center one goes to the other side of the cord so what happens is electricity comes in through here travels through there okay and when they make connection it works so when these are on then it uses this wire so then both wires are used if you didn't use any of these three wires and you just hook this wire up to the post it would work but every time you plug it in it would just come on so one cord one uh, well if it was a one speed it would only have one switch wire here and then one switch wire here to the middle I don't know if that explained it very good for y'all but um, yeah so the two outside to the switch go to this post then one wire goes here, 
one wire goes to the center of the switch as a neutral so when it's off it cuts that wire off now when it's on it uses power from both wires okay so that's about it one speed will only have two of these wires and it will only have one toggle positions instead of two and it's very easy to change it from one speed to two speed but you might want to change your gear or you're gonna have a turbo clipper and you'll have to change your armature all right here's your spring or screens they keep hair out I recommend having them on um, because oscars have to suck in air through here and push air out here so if you don't have any screens it's sucking hair in here going all the way through your motor and see this person has a little coming out there this is probably pretty dirty okay now to get these apart let me take this other brush apart and add it myself okay that the springs are a little sad let's make them a little happier not very much, just, you know, you just want to make a clean connection. Okay, what I do with this is I take this snap ring, especially since I don't have snap, good snap ring pliers. I have little Radio Shack ones. I haven't bought nice ones yet. This ring is to help the case from breaking. You snap this ring, it'll bust your case wide open. So, let me see if I can do this here. Uh, these are some mint craft radio shacks. Not very good, but they will work. So what I do is I pry it up a little, then I pop it out. Okay, then there's another ring right here. You want this in there. If it's not in there, then your clipper's going to rattle this one's pretty tight but it'll still rattle and basically the field and armature the field and armature they float in here I'll show you how once I get it it out to get it out hmm. okay so this is the armature two-speed armature see the black carbon I'll take it on my polishing wheel it won't grind anything away but it will remove the black okay so that's nice and shiny now removing that black is good because if you get enough of the black then it uh, shorts your armature out. Just like I said how carbon um, gets stuck in there. Okay, This is your field. There's a bushing down in there um, with a spring that holds the bushing up. These are your two contacts. What I do is I always bend them up a little bit. Be careful you don't want to break them. Um, so yeah, this looks pretty clean. I don't even, um, see how there's wires that gets hot because electricity travels through these. See, it goes through here all the way around into the brushes. Okay, so what I do here is I take a little bit, uh, a little bit, uh, drop it down in there. I put a little on the end of the shaft here and then I push it in and then I make it go in and out because that's what the bushing does so basically what this does is it frees up everything see how this is a, a floating field it just sits in the housing it's really not bolted or anything um, and then what I do right here is I get all the corrosion down in the bushing out of it because there's a little spring in it just helps it with its movement so I oil the front but first we'll set this aside let's go back to the housing okay there's a plate right here it's called a thrust plate <laughs> I 
Well, anyways, this is a square piece of black plastic. Stupid camera. Anyway, what this does is it, um, if there's a little knot in it, you want to replace it. So basically, the armature rides on in there, and when it wears out, then you could just replace this instead of replacing your whole case. It's a good idea. So now, if your clipper sounds like it's like hitting something, it, it could just be that right there. Because if this wears out, then the fans hit the top of the bolts on the case. And then there's a bushing down in there. You don't want to forget that one either. Or bearing, whatever you want to call it. It's, I don't think it's very much of a bearing since it doesn't have any balls in it. It's just a brass bushing. Uh, these are felts. Your clipper will still run without them. Um, what they do is keep from hair getting down in here and that's a good idea alright so I oil the front of this bearing bushing and then a little bit on the armature here <coughs> and then I push it together see and then I make sure the whole the hole lines up if you have a little trouble <coughs> now you can do this and then it'll pull it the other way like a screwdriver so you could push it either way but if it doesn't want to do that you need to be careful because if you do it too hard it'll break that and then you'll have to replace the whole bottom of the field housing <clears throat> okay so yeah so just make sure you get it lined up right at first keep this on put your washer back in that's nice and snug Take your snap ring pliers. And, oh, sorry. Yeah, if I had better snap ring pliers, that's really easy. But I don't. So you want to make sure this is all the way down, and you could do that while your ring's still on pushing these down just to make sure they pop in into place there you go so there's that there's the end we're done with this ring let's uh, go ahead and put the brushes back in they're still good if if they get below half I just replace them because I make sure it lasts for at least three months and the Lincoln lever usually I replace every time just because they're moving parts and it's five dollars extra so might as well just get it taken care of so you don't get stuck there not grooming and just have a clipper that's making a lot of noise put the caps back on you need those brass inserts around the brushes because they connect to the brass fittings in the field so it may not work if the spring isn't touching any of that metal it won't even get power so it's good to put those back in alright you take a little lube right here put it around this like so put a little down in the hole around there put this on make sure your washers on um, and then you can squirt a little in the hole and a little around the and if you're feeling real crazy you could put a little down in there but try and don't don't get too crazy with it see this is bad grease it just needs to be removed see how black it is you don't want that going back into the gear so I see people fill that up all the time and really they're just hurting their own clipper and wasting grease making me have to clean out grease it's just a waste of time so please don't do it okay there's uh, grease around here put this on there link moving around put a little grease around here just put a little little grease make it 
make it a happy link. Okay? See, I got grease, 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 grease all over. I take the back of this, and then I line it up to the front. Bam! It's in there. Look at that. No play at all. That's how you want your clipper. Um, this clipper will be for sale on my website for um, $70. Um, you can purchase it all online through the website DiamondEdge2015.com or you can just call me or text me or email me and I'll reply as soon as I can. Okay, so that's all clean. I bend the plate like this so when the screws push it down then it flattens out. So, see it's like this. And then when you put the screws back in though, See, so then it meets and it goes all the way to the, see, that's how it looks. But when I put a screw in it, it makes it look all gorgeous. Okay, see, that, that's a happy pretty little plate. Okay, so the hinge is bad. Let me show you again. I can lift it up, that's bad. That shouldn't even ever be able to be lifted up by your fingernails without ripping them off. I'm sure someone can open it with their fingernails, but not me. It'd rip my fingernails off. So, uh, take these off. And I got a 76 on my website for sale for 65. Okay, so go like this. Uh oh, pop it off. And let's see if that looks bent. If it looks bent, you could just straighten it, or what I recommend is just replacing it just to ensure that it works. Because there's nothing worse when you get something back and it doesn't work. Especially for a uh, two dollar and fifty cent piece okay let me get a new spring and I'll be right back okay this is a brand new hinge see those two little little spring arms there you want to make sure it goes in the in the see the little bitty holes in there so what I do is I flip it upside down and I line it up, put them in the two holes and then pop this front down. See? Now it's popped on there. Now it's all good. Watch. There's no way I can lift this. So that's a good hinge. Okay, so you put this back on. Pretty soon I'll have a, a GoPro going. Help make the repairs look a little funner. So you want a good uh, flathead screwdriver for these because stripping these out isn't pretty and it's not good to have a, a loose hinge. Be careful on over tightening these. Um, wet. What I've done before is I tightened them so tight I broke the heads off off these screws and then I had to replace the whole housing for free because it was my fault. But uh But uh, I learned my lesson from that one. So
There you go, you want to pop your hinge up. See, it's hard to do even with a screwdriver. You want it nice and strong. You don't want your blade flopping around. Okay, remember I bent these up so they could touch these better. So let me blow the little hair out of here. There's none in the, the screens. You could take those off and blow them, but I could see there's none from the inside. Okay. See that little notch? That little notch needs to go here. I see people just grind that notch off and just do it how they want. That won't work. See how see how the contacts hit perfectly when the notch is lined up? And then I hold the, the housing on. Put the two screws back in. You want them snug, not not uh, too tight, or you'll break the end cap. The screws will go right through it, and just you need those screws because it's ba it basically holds the field afloat, so it doesn't hit each other and make a lot of noise. Um, another thing I see happen is a lot of people take off this nut ring. It's got to be there. Without it. The switch goes in and out and those contacts in there just bust off the switch. I mean, you'll maybe get two months out of it, maybe, and it's going to be a bad switch. So if you're missing one of these, try not to use the clipper until you get one on. It's only like a dollar ninety-nine for that piece, and it really does save you um, six ninety-nine in a switch price. So there we go and that's all together and uh, if it runs good then I did my job right if I if it didn't if it doesn't run then I'm gonna have to look horrible on this video so there's high speed there's low speed okay now watch this this is a floating field so only do this if you took the clipper apart because you gotta re set it into the housing so if your clipper's just running slow and hot, don't do this. It won't do anything. Okay, you hear high speed? Make sure the brushes are in there nice and good. And what it does is it makes that that field float perfectly. See now, see how fast it's going now? I don't know if you can hear a difference. I can. But anyway, that's running very fast. That sounds beautiful. It barely even makes any noise. Can't pop the blade up, that's good. Pop it with the with the latch, pops down. Pops down, you gotta push it a little bit. There we go. That's perfect guys. This will be for sale on my website, $70. Uh, thank you. Um, please enjoy my channel, Clouds Diamond Sharpening. Uh, yeah, Clouds Diamond Sharpening. Um, my email is clouddiamondsharp at gmail.com. Thank you. Have a good day.